idea for PKSBE, which is uh, undoubtedly unique to say the least, has come from three decades of experimental experience of running a highly successful organization called as Genesis, which has provided some of the best professionals in this country. Let me now invite on stage the man of many hats, one of India's leading ad filmmakers and brand guru, Mr. Pralat Kakkar, to present the idea and architecture of learning at his school, the Pralat Kakkar School of Branding and Entrepreneurship. Pralat. Be in a slightly respectable forum and try and behave myself and mind my language, which is uh, uh, very difficult for both Piyush and me because Piyush and me were on a, a national television program um, and the trailer of the program was us outtakes of us just laughing all the time. And uh, everybody is wondering what we were laughing about. So they actually watched the program. And the program was essentially we were laughing at ourselves. And the funniest thing about laughing at yourself is that you don't have to worry about who's going to take umbrage, who's going to sue you, and who's going to throw stones at you. So it's the safest bet. So I think uh, I'll stick to that. Piyush also has to leave, so I'm going to call him up first on the stage to share some of uh, his experiences with Genesis. But this whole idea was that when we started Genesis, uh, the idea was to actually make films, all kinds of films, documentaries, uh, ad films basically, primarily, and uh, maybe features. And so we wrote some, as a matter of fact. And uh, in the process of making films, we had so much fun that uh, we inadvertently uh, started taking not everybody else, but ourselves seriously. And when we started taking ourselves seriously, the journey was all about detail. It was all about detail, and it was all about Murphy. And we have uh, in the office today a big tome of uh, Murphy, of the various positions in which he screwed us. And uh, when you go back into the tome, and you look at it, it makes Kama Sutra look like kindergarten because Murphy never repeats a position. <laughs> and so one of the first verticals of creating professionals was, does your job stop when you tick all the right boxes? No, it doesn't. Not for Genesis people. Your job only begins there because then you start worrying about what Murphy is going to do, because Murphy says, if something is going to go wrong, it will go wrong. So how do you anticipate Murphy? I mean, it's impossible. We've not succeeded till date, but he made us think that there is something beyond ticking the right boxes, which was trying to figure out what could possibly go wrong. Now, from that learning, what could possibly go wrong came a tremendous sense of professional anticipation. And professional anticipation is actually what makes the difference between the true professionals and the also rants. It's not even just detailing. It's also trying to figure out what could go wrong or what can go wrong and try and cover for that and try and anticipate that. Now, in the last 30 years of running Genesis and creating a whole lot of youngsters who we managed to kick out every two years, after they had survived us. So we had a very high attrition rate, by the way. Almost 90% left um, by the first month. Um, some people left in the first hour. Uh, there are people who left in the first hour. Uh, they joined in the morning for on a shoot, and they left after lunch. They stayed for lunch because we had a reputation for giving the best food in the business, because all of us cooked because the office was actually converted, one third of the office was converted into a kitchen and we found that a highly creative exercise. So there were many little experiences that came out of the little 400 square foot office in Genesis. We, we created scuba diving professionals, we created chefs, we created production people, we created film directors, we created writers, we created uh, people like Malishka, 
we created voices we created people who just talked and people who also did now th it was such a varied bag that when we looked at genesis in hindsight and i said hey we did a reasonable job with the art films we weren't the best but we weren't the worst either but we actually created great people and that was a bit of a shock to me because that wasn't deliberate they just happened they came out of their environment as tremendous professionals and at one time i could actually count that 60% of the advertising business in bombay was run by ex genesis and what happened was we used to kick them out after every 2 years and say okay now bahut ho gaya you give your place to another trainee because 2 years is enough for you guys to become entrepreneurs so i think you go and work for somebody else and figure out what it is like to work for other people other than genesis and me and then you can start your own and 90% of them actually started their own shops and for that they had to actually compete against the alma mater and nobody wants a me to you they would only get work if they were better than us so they had to be better than the alma mater who they had graduated from to be actually be able to get work and they got a lot of work so obviously they were better than us and for us to compete with them we had to raise the bar as well so every year that we graduated people into the market we had to constantly keep raising the bar for the new trainees that came in so that they would be able to compete and so forth and so on and somebody once asked me he said how come uh, in india the only two professions that really stand out as outstanding internationally is the it business and the advertising business and i looked back and i said yeah it's right because our advertising professionals are as good as anywhere in the world and our advertising films are possibly better than most of the places in the world it's just that most of the world doesn't understand our kind of films because we are like that only mind it so because we are like that only we make actually films for ourselves and not necessarily for the rest of the world and because we make films very successfully for ourselves we have a unique pattern of growth in this country which no other country has actually followed because they've been following the western model and a long time ago when piyush was a trainee um thanks to indira gandhi all the foreigners left and we were all left holding the bag wondering what to do with ourselves and uh, piyush went to cadbury for instance as a as a junior copywriter at that time he just left t and uh, um uh, joined advertising <laughs> <laughs> and and was still a cricketer and uh, during lunch time everybody on the corridors used to pad up and 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 play what is that funny cricket that we used to play where your feet are the wicket usko kya kehte hain yeah french cricket correct god french has lots of uh, uh, different connotations but nonetheless <laughs> that's what ogilvy used to be doing playing french cricket during lunch thanks to piyush but piyush was unique for indian advertising and i believe that specifically we might say whatever he wants but my understanding and study of the advertising history of india is people like piyush people like kamlesh people like prasun his brother as well as prasun joshi were key in changing the way we thought because before them everybody dreamt in english we were writers and people were recruited because they, they they thought in english they studied in english they dreamt in english the mother tongue was english okay this bunch of people actually were disruptors because they dreamt in two languages they not only dreamt in english because they could conduct themselves in english but they also dreamt in their vernacular into their mother tongue which was hindi and because they were so powerful in that and they were so adamant and they were so determined to change the language of india to indian they made this huge difference and they made this huge difference because when you dream in a particular language it changes the syntax it changes the humor it changes the way we look at ourselves it changes the fact that we can then afford to laugh at ourselves and unfortunately there are not enough people like them in this country today 
because we've stopped laughing at ourselves. We take ourselves so seriously because we are so insecure about our abilities that you make fun of anybody or anything at any given time and somebody puts a court case against you or somebody takes umbrage or somebody comes and throws stones at your house or somebody surrounds you and does uh, fold, as they call it. So this what these guys have done for Indian advertising and, and for India as such is kept that fact that we can laugh at ourselves alive because then we can laugh at ourselves in the vernacular and not in English because when we laugh at ourselves in English, it's slightly arrogant because it's like an Angre is laughing at you for being an Indian. So that kind of humor is different. But when an Indian laughs at himself, it's completely different. It's real. It's from the earth. You can smell it. So we learned that if we could create such professionals in the last 25, 30 years, then why not take that cumulative learning, put it and try and put it into a curriculum because it was completely random. There was no curricula. Everything was exper experimental and experiential. And unlike Murphy, we tried not to repeat ourselves. And it was constantly evolving. So the PKSB is actually a result of those 30 years of experimentation of creating great professionals in their own right to be able to put them into a curriculum. And so instead of just training four trainees or five trainees a year, we'll try and train from 60 to 100 trainees a year, which is what our bandwidth is. And I don't think we can handle more than that at this stage. Because we are learning as we go along as well. Because this is the first time we've tried to be put it down on paper. We've tried to call it an uh, organization. And uh, with all the encouragement that we got from Mr. Guy and Meghna and the people from Whistling Woods, I think without them, it would have been a stillborn dream. Because we've been still dreaming about it in, the, in my 400 square foot office. And saying, yeah, let's take on more trainees. Let's take on 20 of them. You know, the problem would have been, how the hell are we going to feed them? The, the fact was that in our kitchen in the office, we used to feed 30 people every day, and the staff strength was only 12. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody is from the building used to land up and come and eat. I would like to invite Mr. Subhash Gai on the stage uh, to try and figure out why on earth would he spend so much time, effort, and money of his extremely amazing institute, which is one of its kind in the world, by the way, to allow us to share his campus and maybe ruin his reputation. <laughs> Sir.